end of the week rally for the JSC and for most markets and that's despite those negative uh, jobs numbers coming out of the US last night and also that uh, disappointing first quarter growth number 1.8%. Yeah, um, you know, yesterday's uh, U.S. data was really disappointing, but uh, our markets didn't feel it, and uh, neither did, um, you know, the United States. Towards the end, um, they closed up, um, you know, not convincingly high, but um, high enough. And uh, this morning in Asia, also, uh, markets closed up, except, of course, there in Japan, where we saw some disappointing CPI figures, where it was CPI went up by, um, in, uh, went up for the first time in two years, and, um, you know, obviously, um, costs there being passed on onto consumers, and I think that economy economy can ill afford after the disaster they suffered this year but um, you know obviously then um, you know our markets went up and um, it's quite strange that I was looking at the US futures are down quite a bit today um, however our markets are strong in line with the European markets. I mean of course there's a public holiday in the United States in, in, on Monday so would you expect trade to be a bit jittery today and quite quiet? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's nothing much really coming out today. There are, the, the economic data of the U.S. would be the personal um, spending and consumption. And uh, I think also maybe pending home sales is coming out and some consumer confidence data. So nothing really that would um, rock um, the, the, the market later on. Um, you know, and also I think a lot of these, a lot of subdued um, um, uh, trading um, in the session later as um, they go into the public holidays on, on Monday. So I think, you know, we're going to see some tapering off in our market, you know, some pullback in our um, from the gains we've seen so far today. How are you viewing the, the rally we've seen, well, if you can call it a rally, over the past few days? Um, because, we, as I said, we started the week in a very negative note on Monday. Uh, that was really pushed on by PMI numbers coming out of China, softer than expected. Uh, we've seen a nice pickup. Do you think this is a relief rally because our markets had been oversold? Do you think there's uh, something bigger here? Do you think it's, it's a recovery here? No, I think it is a recovery. I think we were oversold, um, you know, for the past maybe week and a bit. You know, our markets do struggle quite a bit. Um, and I think players are just really coming in, trying to find some bargains. And there's plenty of bargains to be had right now. You know, certain single stocks or whether you're going into the index as a whole, you know, there, is, so there are certain bargains to be had. So we're seeing players just getting back involved and you're really ignoring economic data that still points to trouble up ahead. Well, we can talk about the bargains to be had a little bit later. But uh, in the meantime, Greece still in trouble. We have Portugal. Uh, it's not looking slightly better because a report out this morning that China is looking to buy Portuguese bonds in next month's auction. And that giving the, the euro a little bit of a flip. Yes, absolutely. Uh, China said they will be participating in Portugal's auction next month. And, uh, you know, that worked well for the euro. We also saw the RAND react very nicely to that. But then it's come back, you know, after the IMF said that, um, you know, unless Greece um, actually does come to the party and meet some of its um, um, obligations and meet some of the things it's promised um, as part of its bailout package, they will not be extending, um, you know, extending debt um, towards Greece. And uh, it seems unlikely that they will actually meet those requirements. So, but, uh, so they will not be they may not be participating next month um, in the auction so that has also worked badly for the euro so we saw a pullback thereafter you know and also the rand um, went up um, uh, quite a bit um, this morning after those bad news and that greek factor is going to continue hanging over these markets until we have final resolution isn't it Absolutely. You know, uh, as I said on Monday, if you have an overdraft and you're not paying it, it's just going to go from bad to worse. And um, well, taking a look at some of the movers today, we have Richemont leading the top 40 table. That show was up 2.7% just a short while ago. Of course, this is a show that was done sharply yesterday. Yes, yeah, so last week's results, um, you know, we saw quite a big sell-off in the price of Richemont. And um, I think, uh, you know, the Swiss data, the Swiss export data came out yesterday and it showed a very, very marked improvement in, um, in exports, um, particularly from the Asian markets. I think that went up something about 18% somewhere near there. And uh, we're seeing that filter through to Richemont, of course. And um, even in Switzerland, they are trading 1.5% up. So it's voted very well for um, Richemont. And also, they came out saying that there may be increased increasing their, um, their workforce just to meet up with the demand, which just goes to show how what a stellar economy Switzerland is. They're really recovering and doing pretty well. So increasing workforce by 900 people by the end of this year. And uh, I think the demand side has been very strong. Despite the Swiss fact that uh, the demand side has really helped um, you know, uh, to, to, to bring the Swiss exports up quite a bit. Well, also up there at the top of the top 40, Exaro, uh, coal mining group, uh, under pressure earlier this week, so this is another show that has been sold off quite heavily, but up uh, over 2% today. Yes, bargain hunters again getting in there. Um, I think also in the, uh, earlier on this week we saw it went down by 4% 4, 4 or just more than 4 
4% when they um, announced that they intend to acquire territory um, iron ore business in um, in Australia. And uh, I think what we saw was that, you know, there was a acquirer, acquiree um, play there where, um, you know, Zara would have lost quite a bit while territory gained quite a bit. So, you know, I think people coming back in, having a look at again at that stock and saying, okay, fine, it's sold off, it's now at a reasonable level, let's get back in there and then just put, participate in this further, um, you know, building that um, um, Xara has for iron ore. Tiger Brands up strongly as well. So another one of those uh, food group we had Pioneer, one of its uh, peers up with results earlier this week. I think Tiger Brands drew up with numbers any time now as well. Yes, uh, Monday I believe is uh, they will be coming out with results. Um, since their trading update on the 17th of May, you know they've had a very a bit of a choppy time. I think uh, you know they've been ignored really. The tension on the market has more been on um, resources and financials. But we've seen some renewed interest um, in Tiger Brands. I think, but this is also up today. You know, so um, so I think. Also, bargain hunters getting in there and getting involved in time for the results on Monday. I think they're actually quite hopeful that it would be a turnaround and something that they want to see. I think they forecast he um, headline earnings per share to be up about 15% or something like that. So, um, you know, so I think players are looking good, um, uh, looking um, to see whether there would be good results coming out of there, and they were quite hopeful about it. Well, another show that's picked up quite nicely is Standard Bank. That show back above 100 Rand. We had the show closing yesterday about a percent higher, up again nicely today. Yesterday came out with that four month trading update, and what well, didn't look entirely positive, it did say the first four months weaker than the first four months of last year. Though it looks like a turnaround started to come through at the end of last year. Yeah, you know, it's very strange with um, Standard Bank has been down for majority of the year, I think down about 7%. And uh, all of a sudden, since uh, the, the actually disappointing trading update um, for the first four months of the year that came out yesterday, you know, the people have taken keen interest in, in Standard Bank. I think perhaps they think they've, uh, they they found a bottom for the share price at the, at the current levels below 100 rand. And they're now trying to push it up a little bit. And, uh, you know, look, uh, Standard Bank did complain about um, weak credit demand and also um, Interest income um, affecting their, uh, you know, sorry, low interest rates affecting their interest income. So, which is their, their business. And I think, um, you know, they are struggling a little bit more than the other banks, um, far more. They are a high cost business. They have done a lot to bring down costs, but um, is it enough? We don't know. Um, I suppose we'll find out at the, um, with your end results. But um, I think at the moment, um, just some players going in there because they think the price is at low levels and trying to get in and get some little uptick there.